हेलो फोक्स वेलकम बैक टू द रुपीडिया वर्ल्ड एंड आई एम अभिनय गुप्ता सो टुडे अगेन वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग विथ द वाइंडिंग अप ऑफ द कंपनीज राइट एंड द प्रोविजन फॉर दिस चैप्टर विल बी कंटेंड इन योर कंपनीज एक्ट 1956 क्लियर विद दैट सो इन द प्रीवियस फ्यू लेक्चर्स वी हैव डेल्ट विद द लिक्विडेटर इन डिटेल लाइक द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ लिक्विडेटर द ऑफिशियल लिक्विडेटर एंड द provisional liquidator and also the duties of the liquidator so if any one of you have missed on any of those lecture please go back to the previous lectures complete them and then move forward right because over there we have already de dealt in detail with the liquidator part right so the main topic under consideration for today's lecture would be the next that is the committee of inspection right you will have the committee of inspection now this committee of inspection you need to understand what they are when do you need them and what are their functions and the roles right so the basic consideration for the chapter is the committee of inspection and basically if we say what it is then it is a committee of inspection it is a committee which represents the interest of all creditors of the company going into liquidation that means if the liquidator is undergoing any procedure for the liquidation then this committee of inspection is a committee that will put a check if they think that no at the end the crux of it would be that the creditors would receive a lesser amount right because the basic whole and soul purpose behind this winding up is that the liabilities of the company gets cleared so creditor creditor is also a liability to the company so if the creditors right they don't have this committee of inspection they can be an instance whereby the procedures that are followed by the liquidator could lead to a lower amount of recovery for the creditors so just to ensure that nothing of such sort entertains in the company nothing of such sort occurs in the company they prepare a committee of inspection they will inspect the work of the liquidator for their own benefits right so basically these committee of inspection are appointed in any company at the event when the company gets dissolved right and there is a doubt that the creditors will not be paid in full for the settlement right so basically you also know we have already discussed in the previous lectures that there are two categories of winding up one is the voluntary winding up and the other category is the compulsory winding up that can be done by the petition filed through the creditor through the members the contributors the registrar anybody right we have seen it in detail already if any one of you have missed the lecture please go back refer to the lecture and then come back right but what i basically mean to say is that the winding up is segregated into two major part one is the voluntary winding up and other is the compulsory winding up so when uh, or in the instance of the compulsory winding up right when the court orders that yeah it is just an equitable for the company to be wound up then along with that they will also send an intimation to the they may it is a discretionary power of the court right so the court may also send an intimation to the creditors of the company that whether or not they want to create an uh, create a committee of inspection right and then at the discretion goes to the hands of the creditors whether or not they want to do so if they want they can appoint the members for the committee of inspection and if they do not want then there will be no committee of inspection as such right now what happens in the case of voluntary winding up there is no court who has a discretionary power then nobody what happens in the voluntary winding up is that the members of the company they call the meeting of the creditors right and they then put down the case in front of them that look this is the liquidator we have appointed are you happy with the liquidator or do you want to form some someone else as the liquidator of the company right then it is a discretion of those people to decide the creditors to decide whether or not they satisfied with the liquidator right now if they satisfied it with the liquidator again there is two circumstances right uh, or even if they are not satisfied what happens basically let me tell you the case that when the company has appointed for example mr x as the liquidator of the company right and the creditor is not too very satisfied with the appointment of mr x so they have an option to elect someone else as the liquidator and then the procedure will go ahead to see which will be the official liquidator finally right but other way ways they can also accept this liquidator in full in full capacity that okay you are the liquidator go on and do your job without any restriction a third thing is that they can appoint the same liquidator that has been proposed by the company but along with it they can also form a committee of inspection who will keep a check if there is at any point of time any drastic effect right on the entire section 
so in general and in short i guess you get the feel of who the committee of inspection are and what are they appointed for right so let us see what are the provisions that are attracted to the committee of inspection as per section 464 and 465 of the companies act 1956 right so the first point that we'll see is about the appointment and we know that the appointment of the committee of inspection is the discretion of the court right if the court wants the court may allow the appointment of the uh, committee of inspection and if the court does not want then it may decline the formation of the company uh, committee of inspection right but this is only the case of the compulsory winding up in case of voluntary winding up the members will call the creditor and ask that listen we have appointed mr x do you accept him then accept him if you want to reject him then reject him if you want to accept him with a condition of forming a committee of inspection do it right so in all ways it has been left open for the creditors to decide so that is how they are appointed right in the company first of all a decision is to be taken whether or not there will be a committee of inspection right now next we need to see what are the methods of appointment the appointment through creditors contributors and liquidators so how are these members of the committee appointed so basically when we talk about the appointment of the committee of inspection we need to understand where does the appointment initiate so the committee of inspection will be formed only when the court has given the permission the court has a discretionary power so the initiation of the committee of inspection's formation starts from the day when the court has given the permission for forming the committee of inspection right then within 2 months the 2 months from the date of the direction of the court the liquidator shall convene a meeting of the creditors right and that meeting will be convened with a specific purpose of determining the members of the committee so the liquidator will ask the creditors to call for a meeting and in that meeting all of them will sit they will decide and they will pass a resolution right that will be an ordinary resolution to form the committee of inspection to appoint the members to the committee of inspection right then once the meeting of the creditors have been conducted right and they have selected one person as or they have selected certain members into the committee of inspection then the meeting of the contributories of the company will also be called and even that will be called by the liquidator but that shall be called within 14 days from the end of the date of the meeting of the creditors right and the main purpose behind holding this meeting is to consider the decision that has been taken by the creditors in the creditors meeting right it has to be cross check it has to be beneficial on both ends right they have to be neutral so instead of focusing entirely towards the committee of creditors uh to the creditors meeting and then deciding the committee of members inspection they will also use the members vote the members discretion in order to form that committee the committee of inspection right so after the end of the meeting of the creditors 14 days hence the company calls a meeting of the contributories of the company right now in this meeting they will decide whether or not to accept the decision of the creditors right in this meeting they will decide that okay even if we are accepting the decisions of the creditor that the committee will be formed and so and so members will be or the creditor would be the member of the committee then they can accept it with or without any modification right and they also have the power to reject it right but if the meeting is not being able to convene in the within the 14 days period what what would be the end result will the meeting never be convened no there is a way out for that so if by any cause either the failure of the liquidator or the failure of the company the company is not able to hold the meeting on the due time then what they do is that the court has the power to extend that duration for holding the meeting right so now consider the situation where the company the meeting the members of the sorry when we have the meeting of the contributories right they accept the decisions taken by the creditor so everything is good the creditors have taken the decision the contributories have confirmed it let's go ahead with it right is they trying to modify it or if they are not agreeing with the uh, decisions of the creditor in, in the entirety then there is a clash between the contributories and the creditors now who would be the decision maker in this case right so understand that the liquidator does not have the power to take decisions 
whereby there is a conflict between the interest of the creditors and the contributory. If anything such occurs in the company, then the liquidator will have to apply to the court for directions. Right? And then the court shall determine the composition of the committee. Okay with that? Next point of consideration for us is the remuneration. Now what do you think when we talk about remuneration in this situation? Right? The company is being wound up. Okay? The liquidator has been appointed. The liquidator is undertaking certain procedures for winding up the company, for uh, disposing of the assets, for paying off the creditors, the liabilities. And the creditors feel that they can be a problem with it. They can be a biasness in the liquidator. And hence, to put a check on that, they appoint the committee of inspection. Now, do you think these people who are appointed in the committee of inspection, they are being appointed or they are holding the office for remuneration purpose? No. They may be suffering huge losses if the company dissolves. If the company is not able to pay them their losses back, they may incur huge losses. So at this point of time, they will never be concerned with the small remuneration that they would be getting by being a member of the committee. right? All they would think is that they will want to be the member of the committee only when they consider that yes, we can have a positive impact. right? We can counter fight the liquidator or we or the people who are who have been appointed as member of the committee are eligible enough to find out the other ways right so these people are not working for remuneration so generally the committee is not entitled to any remuneration but however the court may authorize the payment of the remuneration to them if the court deems fit right so clear with it so remuneration was never the objective of forming the committee of the inspection so we'll not be talking about any remuneration but if they, if the court decides that no, they should be they should be getting a remuneration, then it is a beneficial for those people who have been nominated to be the members of this committee, right? Now, who will be the members of the committee? We will talk about the committee's composition, right? So basically, the members would be appointed from both the ends. That means the creditors would appoint some people from their department from their league and the contributories will also appoint certain people from their league right why because because we need a balance in the committee of inspection right for example if the committee consists of the overall all the members in the committee are creditors now right and now at any point of time they can force the liquidator to act upon in such a way that it is beneficial for the creditors they don't care about the company, they don't care about the other liabilities or anything. They may be biased towards the benefit of the creditors. And the liquidator would face problem in following the procedure that he had decided. Why? Because at every point of time there will be an objection from the committee. And then the matter will be referred to the court, to the court and the court will then again decide. So it becomes a cumbersome process, an, an unnecessary task, an unnecessary repetition. Right? So for that purpose, what they have done is that they have balanced the com committee. That you will have creditors as well, you will have contributors as well. So that neither the contributors are at loss nor the creditors. That means the contributors and the creditors both are at profit. Agree to the point? So the maximum strength of the committee as per the Companies Act 1956 and Section 464 would be a maximum of 12 members. Right? And they can be in any proportion. Like 1 is to 1, that means 6 plus 6, 4 plus 8, 5 plus 7, 1 plus 11, whatever be the composition. The only point is that that composition should be agreed. Either among the creditors and the contributors. And if at any point of time they are not able to agree or the, take a common standing on any particular composition, right? not even 50-50 is what they are agreeing to, then the matter would be sent forward to the court and in this case the court would determine the actual so the court may have the final decision over the uh, proper proportion of the committee of inspection right like whether it is four of contributories eight of creditors five is uh, five and seven six is six whatever be the proportion that will then be decided by the court right next we move on to the next provision over here is the committee meeting now what do you think why do the committee conduct a meeting 
because in that meeting they want to discuss what are the steps what are the procedures followed by the creditors what are the assets that the uh, liquidator has already sold right what is the procedure of that asset was it worth or was it delivered at an underprice or what is overprice delivery what was it they need to take charge of these they need to understand what is going on in the market right so for this purpose they will call a meeting and also to balance the scenario to keep a check and to have the controlling right right now what would be the duration of their meeting or the intervals for their meeting is there any fixed thing like for the directors meeting or the boards meeting you know that you have to have four meetings in a year one in each quarter right those are the conditions given over there so in this case what do you think when we talk about the composition the when we talk about the meeting of the committee what would be the number of meetings or the minimum duration or the maximum duration exactly because you're not able to uh, think anything is or i mean why you're not able to think anything is that there is no possible rational reason to decide that okay at this frequent interval they'll have a meeting like every week or every month or something you cannot fix it because that is need based right so they will automatically appoint that okay on this day we are going to meet on that day when they are meeting they will appoint some other day maybe 2 3 months down the line that okay that day we will be meeting let the liquidator continue with the process and we will be meeting on these two days and then we will be deciding as to how to go ahead with this and what are our budgets right now if at any point of time right between the two meetings because in the first meeting you have decided when the second meeting will be held but between that you feel the need of holding a meeting what do you do if that is the case then the liquidator or any member or any creditor of that company may call a meeting of the committee as and when it thinks necessary and the committee will come and meet right so the power has been given only to the liquidator to the creditors and to the contributories okay with that so you understand how and when the committee would be meeting for solving their or resolving their purposes now when they come to the meeting right there is very rare possibility that all of them would agree on the same topic anybody can have a new idea anybody can have an extremely opposite topic or a contradictory issue whatever can pop up right so in that situation how do you make the decision will you give the maximum power to the people who have the majority number of shares because the creditors don't do not have the shares that cannot be the actual basis or the person to whom the company is liable to with the maximum amount again that is not possible because the contributories for them the company is not liable that means we are on a level playing field and now since we have uh, members from both the party that is the contributors and the creditors we have finally decided that okay if we have to make any decision we will take the decision by majority of the members present so if there are three uh, contributors and three creditors then be less assured that the meeting can be a tie or even if one creditor supports the contributor then the contributors win or if any one contributor supports the credit creditor the creditor win, wins right so basically what i want to convey is in these meetings the decisions are taken by the act of majority the majority of the numbers who are present at the meeting right now what would be the quorum of such a meeting we know the majority we know the total number okay we, we can have a maximum of 12 members in this committee right so what do you think should be the quorum of this committee it is again the same thing either one third of the total number of members or a minimum of two members and hence the committee of this inspection can never act unless the quorum is present right and the quorum we know is either one third of the total number of members or two members in totality right now when the liquidators are preparing the accounts as we have seen in the previous class right they have to submit their accounts their audited statement and stuff with the court with the registrar right at sometimes with the other members and the liquidators as well the sorry the members and the creditors as well so do you think that the committee of inspection that we're talking about they will also be covered in the same concept 
that means if we talk about the right to inspection of the accounts the committee of inspection shall have the right to inspect the account or the liquidator at any reasonable time do you think that is viable over here the answer is yes because you have already given the right for inspection to the creditors individually to the members individually then why don't you give that right uh, that right to the committee who have been that has been formed by those members and those creditors itself right that was about the inspection of accounts now we have two more two more provisions to be understood right that would be the cessation of the membership and the filling of the vacancies right we have it on the screen the cessation of membership and the filling of the vacancy right but this uh, we'll be dealing in detail in the next lecture because we have a little shortage of time in the lecture that we are dealing with today and in that lecture we'll also deal with the duties and functions of the committee of inspection right so that there are three topics that we are leaving as a pendency from this lecture two are the provisions right that is the cessation of membership and the filling of the vacancy and one is the duty and the function of the committee of inspection so with that in the next lecture we'll be completing with the provisions of the committee of inspection right and then we'll move on to the next topic that is the power of the liquidators okay with that so until next class this is abhinay gupta signing off please stay tuned for the videos that are coming up and for any suggestion any query please use the comment box below right so until the next class this is abhinay gupta signing off thank you and bye bye